How's it going, everyone? My name is Maximilian, and you're watching episode 32 of Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, The Online Warrior. What is up, folks? Thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of Ultimate Marvel 3, The Online Warrior. And as this is the latest episode in quite a while, I think it's been over a week and a half, maybe two weeks since the last episode where we were talking about Morrigan being one of the top tier dominating characters. Uh, a lot has happened since then, and my apologies guys, I didn't mean to like ignore the online warrior. There were just a lot of other priorities going on right now in regards to me shooting stuff for things like assist me and trying to get the best stuff possible and moving my house, going to things like E3, stuff like that. So. No need to worry, the online warrior for games such as Ultimate Marvel and Street Fighter Cross Tekken and the other games I've been featuring is not going anywhere, so uh, don't worry about it too much, guys. So, what I wanted to talk about in this episode, as you guys mentioned, or as is noticed in the title, is the, the best coast. Um, so, to give you guys a bit of a history lesson when it comes to Marvel games or the Versus series... There's always been this huge ongoing rivalry with Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Now this guy kind of applies in general to the fighting game community, especially when it comes to region versus region, but there's always been this huge rivalry between East Coast and West Coast. And that kind of goes naturally with a lot of other sporting events where East versus West is just huge and it leads up to a lot of hype and things like that. However, in Marvel vs. Capcom 2 back in the day, it was pretty big. And you had these huge rivalry East Coast versus West Coast type money matches that went down on EVO. Pretty big things that would happen against the best players versus the best players. And they were pretty much the most hyped things on the planet. Now back in the day, the East Coast and the West Coast were very different. They had a lot of different players representing them. And the players that were representing back in the day are not the players as much representing now. Because a lot of folks that were in the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 scene didn't as much translate to the Marvel 3 scene. Even though a lot of the guys did, like Justin Wong and Fanatic and I can go on for a big list, but dudes like that. So what we have now is a West Coast that is much different than the East Coast. Justin Wong, who is a notorious, excellent Marvel player, does very well at tourneys, is considered the best by many, is now a West Coast player, even though he's originated on the East Coast and represented Chinatown Fair and everything over there for the longest time. So now things are a bit different, and the reason I wanted to mention this is that East Coast Throwdown 4 recently happened and was an extremely hyped tournament with a lot of high-profile money matches, and one that I believe to be the highest profile file money match for Marvel 3 to date. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the Ray Ray versus Fnatic money match was the biggest one yet of of this game. Now, this was a this was an, a notable match because it was putting together players that were arguing who had the best of certain characters and things like that. Uh, it was it was a really interesting one because Fnatic, as you guys, or if you guys might not know, runs a Marvel vs. Capcom 2 team. And he's an old Marvel 2 player from the Dreamcast days who also used a pad back in the days as well, which is really surprising. Uh, so this guy's, been, this guy's been playing for an extremely long time, and he's going up against a, what I think is a relative newcomer. His name is Ray Ray, the guy's like 19 years old, and he's been doing extremely well at Marvel 3 and Ultimate Marvel 3, placing really high on East Coast tournaments and stuff like that. So now we had like a West Coast player and an East Coast player meeting up for the biggest, like I think, money match ever for Ultimate Marvel 3. And it was kind of the same thing on the tournament end, which was which was separate than these money matches, where the tournament itself were going to be the best of the West Coast going to the East Coast, where the East Coast players had been extremely dominant with guys like Chris G and Marlon Pye and Noel Brown, and the list goes on, guys like Master CJ, Ray Ray. If you guys want to check out any of the results of East Coast Throwdown, you can check out shoreyoucan.com or eventhubs.com. They're the updated lists of information as far as all tournament results and stuff like that to get your fix of what's going on. Going on. And if you want to see the matches, I suggest checking out youtube.com slash team spooky because all of the match footage should be going up on his channel relatively soon and you can see exactly what happened. But what happened was really surprising. Now, the East Coast had some diabolical strategies, stuff that no one really thought could be broken. Things like Chris G's devious Morgan and his, his team that went with it that seemed almost impossible to get through. These guys seemed like they were unbeatable. Guys like Marlon Pye, who has some of the best offense in, in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, like, period, and he's one of the most technical players ever. He can almost kill you with any touch at any character at all. So what happened was these players 
I think we're presumed to be the better players of the few. This high profile money match was this thing going on the side, which was an East Coast versus West Coast kind of like separate thing. But I didn't, I, I'm pretty sure the overall opinion was that Christie was going to take the whole thing, and the West Coast wasn't going to be ready for the Morrigan stuff. And the big thing for everybody that, that doesn't know, there's not a lot of crazy Morrigan play on the West Coast as far as I, as far as I, I understand. You correct me if I'm wrong, if there's certain players that are extremely plum, proficient with Morrigan and a Morrigan team that's similar to what Chris G does, but it didn't, it, I don't, I don't remember seeing a lot of it, and it's like, do we have the, the patience and the capability to stand up against the East Coast, because the East Coast also had players like uh, Dominion, who also uses a fairly similar team, but not really. He uses Morgan. Um, and it was the big question, is, is the West Coast going to be able to fight against this? And surprisingly or not, uh, I think the West Coast did surprisingly well. And what happened in the end was that Fnatic ended up taking first place, and he went up against Justin Wong in the finals. So it was actually an entire West Coast finals that was happening at East Coast Throwdown, which was really surprising. Ray Ray ended, take, ended up taking third, Filipino Champ ended up taking fourth, Chris G got fifth, and Combo Fiend, uh, I think, got sixth. So, there were other guys like Marlon Pai and Rai Rai, which were tied for eighth as well. So, that, that, was, that was a fairly stable top eight of es West Coast and East Coast. But the West Coast surprisingly took the top spot. So, it's pretty interesting that the West Coast was able to do so well, and this is where I'm kind of interested in getting your folks' feedback. Uh, for a lot of you guys that have been following the Marvel Tournament scene, or you follow my videos to get updated with, with what's going on in this stuff, and you might have checked it out, uh, who do you think, or which coast do you think, is most likely to win a big tournament, the biggest one of them all, which is coming up fairly soon, and that's EVO. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really torn right now because I was thinking guys like Chris G are just gonna plow through absolutely everybody and take EVO no problem, but it, could it be that they're actually hiding things before going into the big final tournament at EVO? Stuff like that is an absolute possibility because at this point I don't know if they want to show off absolutely everything they got, and what I love about Marvel 3, and Ultimate Marvel 3 as well, is that every time there's a big high-profile tournament, and one like this where there was a lot of players coming from the West Coast, there was a lot of representatives from the East, and then they all came together and battled it out in this huge, crazy, epic finals that was a combination of East Coast and West Coast players that don't play each other very often, and it was them just down the list with West Coast coming out on top at the end, but there was new technology everywhere. Even with the characters that we've seen a lot of before, there was new stuff flying left and right. And it was really awesome to see this, how every single time there's a big tournament for a game like Marvel, and there's a huge major that comes up, these guys always come up with brand new stuff in a game that we think is, like, maxed out at some point. It would, it's just a testament to Marvel and how, how much there is in this game and how freaking awesome it is when you have the people uh, dedicated to figuring out that technology. So, here's where the final question comes at hand. We had that big, we had the finals of the, of the East Coast Throwdown, which was kind of uh, taken by West Coast in the top two, and then Ray Ray versus Fnatic ended up going in Fnatic's favor, but I think by, by I think like 10 to 5. So, it went fairly well. It looks like Fnatic was having some trouble at first during these matches, but then he was able to somewhat get an understanding of how to play the game, and he kind of like just went on a tear in the very end. So, here's, here's a good example of the West Coast going over to the East Coast. Do we think the same thing can happen later on, where the East Coast is going to come over here and dominate in something like EVO? I'm not saying I know, I'm not, I'm not really picking sides either, even though I'm kind of naturally biased being on the West Coast myself, but what do you think? Who do you think is going to be the huge heavy hitters at EVO? I'm not going to say who do you think is going to specifically win EVO, but which which side of each of these like dominating territories do you think is going to take the biggest tournament ever, and that's coming up fairly soon, and will kind of strengthen the huge rivalry between West Coast and East Coast even more. So a little bit of food for thought. Uh, go ahead and leave your comments below as far as what you guys think. But let's get into some of these online ranked games that I had so far, and then jump into a match that was sent in through the online warrior submission. So as you guys have probably noticed, earlier in the video I was switching up my teams a little bit. Uh, just like last time I was mentioning how I wanted to start using Iron Man again. Good old classic Tony Stark, difficult as hell to use character, and I don't know why they still made him so hard to use. But he is, and he's a challenge, but at the same time, not a lot of people know how to fight against him, so I was surprisingly doing better with this character than I was with my normal teams. Uh, even though earlier in the match you might have saw that my, my rank has been changing a lot, and it's because I'm switching up my character usage a little bit. I still rock Doom and Strider on the end because I love those guys. Except Doom, I don't really love Doom. He's just good. So, Iron Man currently is pulling a pretty sweet corner combo and is going to kill Wesker. 
Uh, I don't know how the hell Iron Man was able to take out Wesker, uh, use a little bit of his spacing, and Doom comes in, lands a foot dive, throws him back into the air, puts a giant uh, giant plasma blast in his back, and now he's dead. Doom versus Doom, there's some lasers all over the screen, there's a foot dive coming down, and you better believe that's going to lead to a big combo. Uh, barely get the connection at the end, I choose to snap in his Strider, because he's also rocking Doom and Strider on his team. And I think he was actually using the same team that I do, which was pretty funny. Wow, Doom comes flying in by the back of his heels and takes out both of my characters. Uh, but he hits me with a plasma beam, trying to space things out a little bit with Strider. He's doing the exact same thing as me, but what I'm looking for right here is this. Strider to come out, throw a Sphere Flame, toss... Wow, three Sphere Flames in this man of like a second. And his Strider is dead, so that's what you need to look out for if you have guys that have uh, vertical supers is that Strider's gonna come in, and if you can X-Factor and take out Strider's assist, it's it's really easy. And if you have them, if, if your opponent is not covering that assist, man, it, it makes it really hard. But now we're both X-Factored, he just used his X-Factor to save himself in the very end. I think he tried to do the exact same thing I did, which was to take out Strider with a Sphere Flame straight up, but it didn't work. We're now throwing finger lasers left and right, trying to keep the spacing going. Uh, and he's gonna run out of super right here, and I'm not gonna take much damage from this because finger lasers don't do any chip damage. They just space really well. So now, uh, I think he's gonna be remaining out of X-Factor. That missile stops him from following up my combo, but there's not much he can do. If I play this keep away game a little bit in the very end, I don't think there's much else he's gonna be able to take in this game. Yeah, or maybe not. Maybe not. He's still alive. He's still alive. It's okay. We still got this. We still got this. He's in there. I, I guess not. A box dash for the win. So like I was saying earlier in this fight, if you are going up somebody who uses Strider, and even guys like me who like using the Strider assist, and you have a character like Doom, X-Factor, or actually, I'm sorry, throw a Sphere Flame, and then X-Factor, and toss another one, and that is one dead future ninja. This next match is going up against a Dormammu, Wesker, and Magneto. You guys might have noticed this guy earlier. Uh, for some reason in the online ranked games for Ultimate Marvel 3, it loves to pair you up with the exact same person over and over and over again. I swear to God I fought this OMG Chuck Norris guy at least like, I would say 20 to 25 times in a single night. And it was, it was completely crazy and we kept fighting each other. And I think we ended up being fairly similar on the overall win record. I'm not too sure between each other, so these are some pretty good games. However, Iron Man's doing a great job until I miss the combo from the Repulsor Blast, and this is going to lead to a dead dude in a big metal suit. Yep, toasted. So now I'm going to be going against a Wesker, Magneto, and, and Dormammu that is quickly recovering health. Tries to pull me in into the black hole, and it didn't work. Strider's on my back end, and I'm gonna wait for him to do exactly stuff like that, but I mess it up by doing a really low foot dive. I don't know what the hell happened here. Strider flies through Magneto because of the invincibility of the throw. He screws up his combo, Wesker comes in, gets tagged, and Magneto is taking the blunt force of those full screen plasma blasts. Try to catch Magneto on the top end, he misses his crossover. Wow. Switching sides left and right, what's gonna happen? Strider comes in, gets a hit, Magneto coming down, Strider coming down, and... Wow, that huge exchange ended up with Strider hitting a hard knockdown, and then Doom gets him quickly out of there. Now, Dormammu's in here, and I need to find a good moment to get Strider to uh, take advantage of him being in the air, because that's the hard thing against characters who have a powerful move off of a hard knockdown like Doom. That's why Doom and Strider work so well together, because it prevents the other person from moving around. I did an air dash in the air, so I was able to block the full screen chaotic flame, and I prevent the next one with a full screen plasma beam. And now Dormammu was dead. Wesker comes in, and the the darkness begins. The the man with the plan, the evil Resident Evil Boston. But Strider's in here. Future ninjas are always better. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to extend this combo much more. Miss the very end, but I grab him with a throw, and wow, I, just a bunch of missed combos there. Luckily, I was able to get out Ouroboros right before my X Factor ended. And I don't tag him with the bird. Uh, if you're able to, if you're able to hit full screen Ouroboros and you start throwing the 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 discs, and you throw out a bird, you can actually teleport into the bird and then go down for a combo. It's this little cool nifty thing. But now he's got Wesker, very little life, full health Strider, but that doesn't really matter because Strider doesn't have any health anyway. Uh, playing a full screen spacing game, we're both throwing out projectiles. This is actually some pretty smart play right here. Uh, and I make the stupidest decision ever and wow, and then go in for a impatient, impatient attack and that's gonna be it. I don't think he's gonna live. Yeah, dude, Strider's totally effed from that. So, here's a good example of patience taking priority. The guy was playing full screen, not jumping in, realizing his position that he was low on health, 
and I just got ridiculously impatient. And that's that's the problem with games like this is that you need to recognize the position you're in and act accordingly because you don't you're not at an advantage by going in with all that health, for example. And this is the perfect example of that. So try to realize those situations, see what you're at at an advantage, and yeah, just just to show you guys here, it kicked my ass in this scenario. And our online warrior clip of the week was sent in by Clone Trooper using a fairly unique team of X-23, Zero, and Rocket Raccoon going up against, I think it's Trish, uh, Dormammu, and I can't actually see the third character. Might be Magneto? I'm not too sure. But Trish and... What's funny is that both of these characters, Trish and X-23, have excellent, like, dive kicks. Dive kicks that are good on block, and I, I think we're going to be seeing fairly similar gameplay between the two, but Trish lands hers. You got to recognize that if Trish hits you, hits you with a dive kick, if you push block it, it doesn't matter. Uh, Log Trap comes out, gives X X-23 an opportunity to finish up this combo, and I think with the DHC, this should just about do it. Zero Skittles coming down from the sky to kill the Devil May Cry Lady. Now here's, here's going to be an interesting mix-up. He doesn't get it very well. Uh, it was Morgan, it looks like the other guy had. Wow. Off of the, wow, off of the buster, he hit the log trap, but did not follow up with the combo. Throws out the invincible uh, super with Morrigan, and Zero is barely avoiding everything, but he gets tagged at the end of the chaotic flame, and now Dormammu is in. They're squaring off against each other, Dormammu trying to fish hook Zero, but it does not work. Log trap to the rescue, and now Zero is doing some work. X-23 picking him up off the ground, down again. Will he go for a super? Oh, no lightning loops, but he gets a reset in the very end. Maybe that was the intention all at all. Uh, so X-23 picks him up once again, the exact same thing we just saw. Log Trap, blast him down, pick him up, I don't think you can do anything off of that, and wow, Dormammu picks up an easy combo. I would do the exact same thing, X-Factor and kill Zero. This should absolutely kill him, yeah, the dude's got very little health. And now Morrigan is in, with her freaking ri ridiculously hard to deal with super, so let's see how good this guy can manage, wow. Oh my gosh, X-23 uses her, her almost full invincibility hyper, but it does not work. Morgan blocks, kills X-23, and now we have left is a poor, helpless little animal that has just escaped from the pound. He's throwing down, <laughs> throwing down huge traps, throwing logs everywhere. Wow, there is plasma left and right, every, <laughs> energy going everywhere, and Rocket Raccoon hits a hard knockdown. Interesting, I don't know if you can actually follow up with her, her off the ground super, maybe you might be able to. Rocket Raccoon throws down a giant claymore mine to prevent Morgan from getting in, but Morgan is just staying in the sky throwing those fireballs. Not gonna deal with any of it because Morgan does the best at the end of the screen and not getting in your grill most of the time. And this is gonna be a difficult thing for Rocket Raccoon because Rocket Raccoon's keep away is not the best. I don't know if there's much else he can do right here. Rocket Raccoon is at the serious disadvantage right now, especially with Morgan with meter, unless you get a log trap and, oh, miss the OTG, that's so heartbreaking. And miss another opportunity, oh my god. You don't get that many opportunities with Rocket Raccoon. This is gonna be fairly difficult to come back from. But now Morgan is getting a little impatient and going in. Misses, misses her opportunity, flies away, misses the trap, throws a couple of uh, fireballs, and oh my gosh, teleports at the perfect moment. But once again, misses his opportunity. However, Dormammu was still there, hits him off the ground, and he's just out of range. Wow, so Morgan's super is not actually full screen. He was able to hit Morgan and kill her. Here comes Dormammu, spring of the trap, and oh my gosh, is he going to be able to do it? And barely misses the OTD. There's so many opportunities here. Barely lost, but he still takes it. And it was a trade. Oh my god, it's a draw game. He didn't take it. Holy hell, I, you'd never see draw games in Ultimate Marvel 3. I think I've only seen like one or two in the entire since the original version of the game. So what happened in this game was that Rocket Raccoon was presented with a lot of opportunities, but he was just barely out of reach for so many of them. I think he could actually have taken this game, especially off of the happy birthday opportunity, and was able to get that full screen awesomeness off on Morrigan, but it just wasn't enough. But a very cool clip. Thank you very much for sending in your footage, Clone Trooper. And if you would like to have your gameplay clip featured on the Online Warrior, I'll be glad to provide commentary and a quick match analysis afterwards. All you have to do is make a video response to this video and follow the instructions on the screen right now, titling it Online Warrior Submission. But leave a thumbs up if you're glad to see Ultimate Marvel 3 The Online Warrior back in action. I am definitely glad to be back. It's good to see this game running up once again on this channel. Thank you all very much for watching. This has been Maximilian, and I'll see you guys next time.